Okay, um, I've got a bunch of amazing facts about George H.W. Bush right now, uh, and this is going to be surprising in a couple of ways. First of all, I lied. I don't do that often. I said four amazing facts. I think it's more, so let's keep counting and see what happens. Uh, and uh, second of all, uh, amazing fact about me is it's 2.30 in the morning here. I'm in Vermont. I came to the Sanders Institute where they had a gathering, gathering of uh, the most serious, badass progressives there are. Uh, and I just can't help myself. I saw the news, and I wanted to uh, make sure that you know about it, put a video about it at late hour. So I'll sign up for TYT membership and do it through Tom slash Jenk so you can get uh, all the shows. Whatever it, it was like 
words that Donald Trump would never use. His third grade vocabulary has never used any of those elegant words. So clearly Trump didn't write it, but that's a small minor point. Um, and of course, of course, uh, Trump was vicious towards all the Bushes, including Jeb Bush, the other son of George H.W. Bush, and Bush himself uh, during the Republican primaries. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, but he got shot down, but he down uh, the plane well enough, so most of the folks on the plane survived. He got a distinguished flying cross for that. And then when he was president, two amazing facts uh, that are really important. One is that uh, he had said during the campaign uh, that uh, the famous line, read my lips, no new taxes. But he thought the country needed taxes, they needed revenue, and that it wasn't the right thing to do to not raise taxes. He did raise taxes, full well knowing that it would cost him dearly politically, and it did, and it was part of the reason Bill Clinton won. A lot of Republicans uh, were mad at George H. So lost momentum, and but he did it based on principle, and he did it because he was a patriot. A big deal. So you have to give him huge credit for that. Now, on the uh, liberation of Kuwait, as he called it, well, that's a mixed bag, um, but comes to give him credit for there. Look, when he did it, he didn't just say, hey, we're doing it for the oil or we're doing it uh, you know, uh, for uh, bad reasons. And, and, and I'm not even, I know that there was plenty of bad reasons why, why it was. He said, look, this is the new world order. And people make fun of that term. But what he, he, at the time, he explained, no, I, I, what I mean by that is that no sovereign nation should invade another sovereign nation that did not attack them, which is what Iraq did to Kuwait. Now, his son eventually ruined the New World Order by, ironically, attacking Iraq when they did not attack us. And the fact that not only no Republicans picked up on that giant disconnect and hypocrisy between George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush, and that none of the media picked up on it was maddening to me. It was actually one of the reasons I voted against George W. Bush the first Republican I ever voted against. I'm like, his foreign policy is diametrically opposed to his dad's. How could you be a Republican and be in favor of both foreign policies? That makes no sense. And in fact, it went further. At the time, people were encouraging Bush to go into Iraq after they, quote unquote, liberated Kuwait. And he said, no. He said, that is not what we got the world to agree to. And again, unlike his son, he got the world, including Russia, uh, Soviet Union at the time, in an unprecedented fashion, to agree with him uh, that the world should go and liberate Kuwait. And so, don't get caught up in the word liberate. They, and they went and, and drove Iraq and Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. And that was important for the world, and the world worked together. That coalition was important. His son did not have a coalition. He just went in blindly by himself, did not get permission from the United Nations, etc. But George H.W. Bush did, but that it was limited to Kuwait, and he wasn't supposed to go into Iraq, and he didn't. He said, one, we didn't get permission for that, uh, and international law matters. And number two, um, it's a terrible idea. Well, what happens after we take over Iraq? Excellent question that his son should have asked. As it turns out, that was really, really important. So that was another good decision by George H. So look, even when he ran that campaign uh, that he won, in 1988 and the one he lost in 92 um he ran on a quote a kinder gentler nation that doesn't sound very republican these days right and a thousand points of light or as he said thousand points of light we gotta have it okay so he was an old school republican that if you grow up now you're unfamiliar with because they become so barbaric he did really actually actually do a lot of modern and a lot of reasonable things and, and things that were good for the country. Did plenty of bad things to him. But there was a lot to admire about George H.W. Bush. So he died today at the age of nine. And his nickname was Poppy. And uh, in, a, in, a, in all ways, you got to give it up to Poppy. Uh, and so um, the country will miss him partly because he might have been the last reasonable Republican. So, um, bless your heart.
Uh, it is what it is. Uh, George H. W. Bush dead at the age of 94. Uh, with a, obviously a mixed record, but an interesting one, and that is more nuanced than you might suspect. Thank you, guys.